dose of nausea at uh, work one night. I think I said, uh, with all this stuff going around, I should probably go up to the emergency room. I'm a veteran, combat veteran. And, uh, you know, everybody says, uh, uh, there's not that many people with COVID, you know, look at the population and how many people there are. We're still like, I used to do that too. And so there's a lot of people in there. I didn't do well in that atmosphere. I had heart surgery in 2013, and uh, that kind of made me, my immune system a little bit weak. I went into ICU on a ventilator. I was in there for a month. I beat the ventilator, I beat the coronavirus, and they sent me to another room to recover. It was life-changing in the fact that uh, I got a chance to Look, look inside of myself, and I knew this from open heart surgery. I got the chance to look inside myself and look at the world as it is and look at the people who are my caretakers. Look at your kids, look at your dog, look at, you know, what would happen if you were gone? It's important that we pause for a minute and realize that we are in the biggest civil rights movement in American history. I don't think you can ever go throughout the history of Toledo or Lucas County or Northwest Ohio and see the amount of calls for justice that we saw over the past uh, two months. I mean, in every community, from Finley to Toledo, Ottawa Hills, to Perrysburg. I think every single community had uh, some kind of call for justice. It's amazing to know that you're not by yourself. The desire for a community is, is, is real. It's what makes the world go round. The desire to know that you're not alone in your thoughts or in your feelings. To see something that started off as, as a simple hashtag grow into a worldwide movement is amazing. I started uh, protesting at the corner of uh, McCord and Central Avenue uh, by myself. And so I've seen over the past six years us go from, you know, being by myself to demonstrations all over the city, all over Northwest Ohio for progress and, and change. It's also bringing in other people. And when you bring in other people, you bring in their perspectives and, and how can they help you achieve your goal? And then vice versa, how can you help them achieve their goal? How do you get them to open up about what it is that they need or what they want for their communities? And that deals with their experiences. And so you just have to have those big conversations. I wanna have big conversations about big ideas and, and how can we change the world? It takes all of that to change the culture, right? Because we, we need to change the laws, but we also need to change the culture. We see people from all different communities embracing that and trying to put that into practice. I felt like my life did not matter in a lot of ways, systemically and interpersonally. And to see that manifest into a call for change all over shows that we're moving in the right direction. To know that there was a community that didn't forget about what is most often the most forgotten population. To know that there's a community of people that recognize the importance of listening to one another and hearing what they have to say and knowing that their stories matter, I think is inspiring. It's overwhelming, it's like a miracle just to see so many people, so much love. And that's unfortunate, sometimes we get caught up with our daily lives and if we forget to give back or to do a good deed or just to say a thank you or hold a door open for somebody. And it's unfortunate sometimes it takes a tragic incident for us to remember those things. He's always been a great kid, he was always, he has always been a blessing. Uh, I remember incidents one time when he was probably five, six years old, we want, walked into either a McDonald's or a Burger King and he'd seen those little charity boxes on the, on the counter and he took out, well, he had two, three dollars in his pocket and he took it out and put it right in there and 
didn't look at nobody, didn't say nothing, and I didn't say nothing to him either. I just left him alone. He's always had a huge heart, kind heart. He loved animals, he loved people, he loved his job. He's always been a blessing. He was a blessing then and he's a blessing now. To see the Toledo ones come together and everybody else, you know, the Michigan, I mean, from over here from the Michigan border, and it's just like, wow. I mean, love always defeats hate, always. You know, same way, you know, look at the light. I mean, light always overcomes darkness. So let's not be quick to judge people because we don't know. Let's not be quick to get angry with people because we don't know what situation they're going through. Just because somebody's not your brother in religion or your brother in a certain race, we're all brothers and sisters in humanity. It's love, brother, love, you know. I just walked in the door and they said, you got it. I got the chance to look inside myself and look at the world as it is. In a time that's so difficult, we actually are moving forward. You didn't give up and you knew that at the end of the day, hundreds of people's lives can be saved. Us Toledo ones, we're special people. We're all brothers and sisters in humanity.